What's up guys? In this video, I want to show you how to graph this piecewise function. Now, piecewise functions can be very confusing a lot of times when students are first learning how to graph them. And the reason being is because you have not only one rule, but you have two rules, and then you have constraints for when those rules are going to be true. So you have this function, right? That's just the name f of x, and you have two rules. You have one half x is only true for x values that are less than zero, and you have the rule two, which is only true for x values that are greater than or equal to zero. So the best way I like to explain it with students is just to go ahead and treat these rules separately. So let's go ahead and take a look at. Okay, so up to this point, if you're graphing a piecewise function, you should know how to graph these. Now, what I wanna do is kind of forget about the constraints, forget about that as a function right now, and just go ahead and take a look at these two um, rules kind of separately. Okay, so what I did is I graphed these rather quickly, and you can see this y equal to is really easy to graph, right? Because you have your y-axis and your x-axis, and this is saying y is equal to two. Y is always equal to two, no matter what the input value is on the x-axis, right? Y is always equal to two. So when you have y equal to a number, that's just going to be a horizontal line. And then over here, you could think about this as like the slope intercept form, right? So we don't have a b, so it's zero. So the graph is gonna cross at zero. And then we're gonna follow the slope to our points, like up one over two, or you can go in the negative direction, negative one to the left two. So we have these two rules. Now, the problem is, if we were to combine these on the same graph, we would no longer have a function, right? Because remember, when you're graphing a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. And you can see if these two graphs, as they are on here, they don't pass the vertical line test, right? Nowhere, actually for all values, they fail the vertical line test. So therefore, we could say this is not a function. But indeed, this is a function. And that's why these constraints are so important. Because what these constraints allow us to do is to still have a function, all right? So now what we need to do is look at each of these rules separately to understand exactly how we are going to constrain them. Now, we have this y is equal to 1 half x, right? That's that function. And then over here, this is going to be the y is equal to two. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is say, all right, we have our y-axis and we have our x-axis. Now we need to understand when is each function going to be true? So let's look at the top one. This has one half x, where an x is less than zero, not equal to, less than. So therefore, this is supposed to cross right there, right? And obviously I drew that a little bit wrong. So it's not equal to zero. So what we're gonna do is just gonna take our nice little eraser. And if you're using a pencil, that's why this is really, really helpful a lot of times to use your eraser. Um, so therefore now you can do an open circle if you're gonna use this technique. The faster and better you get at graphing piecewise functions, you don't actually have to go through. You can just actually take each of these restrictions or each of these equations or rules and then just graph them with their restriction. But if we're first learning, we wanna go through step by step. I like to kind of graph them for all x and then apply the restrictions at the end. So y is equal to one half x is only true for x values less than zero, right? You think about this, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, right? It's true for all these values. So that function is just gonna look like this. Now anything in the positive x-axis, like one, two, three, four, five, six, those are not gonna be true. So therefore, we are going to erase that. Okay, and we can kind of fix the rest of what we got here. Okay, the next uh, rule, which is y is equal to two. So it says f of x function is true at two for all values x is greater than or equal to zero. So when it's equal to, we're gonna have a included point, so we're going to fill it in. Now again, that's only gonna be true for all x values greater than zero. So therefore one, two, three, four, those are all good. But anything less than zero, we are now gonna erase. Okay, now you don't need to write the equations in here. Um, I'm just doing it so you guys can visually see what happened here. And now what I want you to see is, does this function now pass the vertical line test? Right, it does. Like everything over to the left of zero, right, is one half x is going to be true, which is good. And then everything at zero or to the right or positive values, two is going to be true. So therefore, that is how you're going to graph a function like this. Hopefully this video was helpful for you in understanding step-by-step -step how to graph piecewise functions. And if it was, then I know you're gonna enjoy the next video.